Today we are building the secret code vault because every spy needs a place to keep their top secret stuff. Let's start with building the vault. First, connect these two wooden pieces to this Y looking support. Insert at an angle. The blue side of the wood should face in. Let's make two more. Next, press the side onto the vault base. Make sure the clip goes here. You may need to press hard. Now, add the other two sides onto the base. Again, make sure the clips are going in first. Add the straight looking support piece here. The foot should face in and the clip should face down. Make sure it's going in straight. You should hear a click. Time to add the other supports. You may need to push hard. Now for our first stop and check. Make sure the plastic supports are lined up with the top of the wood. They should be flush. Push them all the way in. And yay, you built the vault. Onwards, making the tumbler. First, grab three of the longest bolts and six of the cam plates. Stack the cam plates so the slopes face each other. You should be making a C. Then, put the long bolt through. You'll need to repeat this two more times. Find the tumbler ring with the posts, then attach the green bolts onto it, making sure that these shapes match. After it's in, the round end should face in and the C should face out. Afterwards, just check that it looks like this. Now we're gonna flip this over. You'll notice that there's three tumbler rings left, but we want the two that are matching. Make sure these matching tumbler rings are also facing like this. The open side is up, and now you can align the notches. And then slip the tumbler rings on. Make sure that the notches are facing you. Then grab the last tumbler ring. Make sure the open side is up, Line up the notches and then slip it on. You'll notice that this last one has two nubs. Keep this in mind, it'll be important later. Twist on these three nuts to hold everything in place. Next, grab a lower and upper dial ring. Look closely to find the parts that clip together. The flat side of the orange ring is up and the clip is facing down. While on the yellow dial, the clip is facing up and the shelf is facing down. You'll need to line up this red ring and this yellow ring. You may need to push hard all the way around. Let's stop and check here. Make sure your dial ring looks like this. And if it doesn't, take it apart and go back to the previous step. This is an important step if you want your dial rings to turn correctly later on. If you need to take the two dial rings apart, pry them apart using the clip. You can push on one end, like here, and then on the other side, pull on this clip. Like that. Now you can go around and do the same for all the clips. If it's a little too hard, you can ask a grown-up assistant to help you. Repeat this step to make three more rings with the upper and lower dials. At this time, you get to choose your code, a four-digit code to your own vault. Write it here so you don't forget. It can be any four numbers between one through six. This is called your code key. For our purposes, we're using 4321, but you can make up your own. 
Before you put your wood tile in, make sure your dial looks like this with the red ring on top. Find the notch and face it towards you. You'll slot in the number in front of it. Next, add the numbers from your code to the rest of the rings. Don't forget the order. Before we continue, let's stop and check here. Loosely stack the rings so all the tiles line up. Check that the numbers in the column match your code keys on page 20. Then, make sure all the tiles are slotted in front of the yellow bump. Fix any tiles that are in the wrong place. Add the rest of the tiles in number order from left to right. For example, with four, we'll put in five, six, one, two, and three. When you hit six, go back to one. Make sure your bumps and your code all line up. Now let's lock the rings into place. Stack them together. Then press down hard. Now let's try something before going on. Practice turning the dial rings to jumble the numbers. And heads up, the rings can be hard to turn at first, but they'll loosen up over time. Make sure to line up all the bumps again before you move on. Next, add this round piece to this tumbler piece. You'll notice that this shape matches this shape on the core. Thread the core through the underside. Push all the way through so it looks like this. Then add the handle. Screw short green bolts on top. You may need the multi-tool to tighten. Flip it over and now we'll add these three smaller tumbler pieces to this bigger one. Make sure the shapes line up like this. All right, add your dials over the tumbler piece. Make sure the bumps are lined up. Then flip it over. The numbers should be upside down. Line it up and then press hard down. Then add in the tumbler ring stack you made earlier. We're gonna do this in a few steps. First, let's match the shapes. Rest it on top. It's okay to be crooked. Next, rotate just the dial rings so your code lines up with the notch. The lower blue rings should drop down into the opening, but if it doesn't, you can give it a gentle push. It should only drop down a little bit. Another stop and check time. Make sure the numbers on your dial match your code key on page 20. And check that the notch is aligned with your code. Now this next part, you may need to look very carefully. These are very small features. Look inside and find the small holes on the core. Notice where the blue nubs are on the tumbler ring. You'll need these two to line up. To do this, we'll turn the handle first to turn the core. Hold the blue base while turning the handle. We'll need to match the blue nubs into the small holes. Push down onto the tumbler so the nubs drop into the hole. And if it doesn't, gently push it down. Then turn the handle until the tumbler drops down.
And yay, you've added the tumbler. Let's try it out. First, make sure your code numbers are lined up with the notch on the tumbler. Then try turning the handle. The tumbler should lift up and down inside the dial rings. The blue nubs fit into the sunken track in the core. So turning the handle moves the nubs along that track, raising and lowering the tumbler. When you're done, make sure all pieces are pushed all the way in. Now that you've finished with part B, if you run into troubleshooting, I've got you. If the dial rings don't turn, make sure the tiles are straight. Go back to steps six to eight in part B to check that the dial rings are assembled the right way. If the handle doesn't turn, make sure the core is pushed all the way down and the bolts are tight. If the rings are separating when you turn the handle, go back to steps nine through 12 in part B to make sure the dial rings are connected to each other correctly. So when you turn, these should not separate and the yellow bump should look like this. Before jumping into part C, look into the tumbler to check that the yellow bumps are lined up. You can make sure of this if you see your code. Make sure the code is matching what you wrote on page 20. Turn it counterclockwise to push the tumbler up and turn it clockwise to push it down. Make sure to push all pieces back in before we continue. If the code matches your key, but you're noticing that the tumbler isn't moving up and down, that means that the bumps aren't lining up. You'll need to go back to part B, step six to eight, to make sure the dial rings are connected the right way. Now it's time to add this large piece. But before we put this on, make sure you have everything all ready and set to go. Because once you put this on, it's really hard to go back. Let's go ahead and add this on. You need to find the slot and then match it up with your code. Then push it on. You may need to push pretty hard. There should be no gaps. There's two types of jaw parts. We're gonna look for the L-shaped one first. Now with the rounded end pointing down, we wanna match that to the blue part here and make sure the tab lines up. Now take the other jaw part, the flat one, then clip the jaw here with the hook facing in. Make sure to match the curves. And check that the circles fit into the slot. Now take the other jaw part, the flat one, and insert it into the tab. You might need to wiggle it in Make sure the circles are in the slot. Now repeat those same steps for the other jaws. Turn the handle to try opening the jaws. If the jaws don't open, you'll have to go back to page 37 to make sure the bumps are lined up. You can hold on to this bottom blue part while you turn. Attach the yellow corner cam plate here. You can open up the jaws a little to help you put the yellow piece in. The yellow tabs will lie flat in the orange openings. And this part lines up to the blue ring here. Make sure to press down firmly so that it lies flat. This should be flat when you push it in. Make sure you can still see the blue ring on the outside. Let's add two more corner cam plates. To help with putting these corner cam plates on, you can push down these blue parts and make sure they're all the way down. Let's stop and check. Make sure the yellow tabs lie flat in the base of the jaws and the yellow surfaces line up with the blue ring. Place these three long green bolts here and twist. Use the tool to twist them on and stop when the bolt hits the yellow surface. Now bring back your piece from part A. We're gonna combine these two now. Make sure the jaws are open. Flip this piece over. And now we're gonna bring it over and slot these lock jaws into these spaces. To close the jaws, 
turn the handle. You'll want to hold the blue ring on top as you turn. Ta-da! You've built a combination vault. Now that you've finished the build, if you run into trouble, I've got you. If the jaws don't open like this when you turn the handle, go back to part C and look carefully at each step. You'll need the hooks facing in, you'll need the screws tightened, and just make sure the jaws are built like this. If the jaws aren't closing like this when you turn the handle back, make sure that your vault walls are all the way down and everything is flush. Press down to make sure everything is in. And if you have to, go back to part A, step six. If you forget your code and the lid is off, there is a way to find it again. First, you'll need to take off the yellow pieces. Starting with the number on the bottom, rotate the dial ring until the yellow bump lines up with the blue tumbler notch inside. Careful, this might be hard to see. Repeat for the second number up, and then the third, and finally the fourth, until all the bumps are lined up. Now, just look down and check the numbers that are lined up with your bump. And that's your key. If you forgot your code and the vault is already attached, turn back to page 20 to see where you wrote your code. It might be very hard to open it without it. And in case of emergency, ask a grown-up assistant to help you break into the vault. With troubleshooting out of the way, let's talk about how this vault works. To unlock the vault, turn the dials and line up the code with the slot. Next, to open the jaws, turn the handle while holding the top ring. Lift off the tumbler so you can see what you've already stored inside or put in new things. Finally, to lock the vault again, stack the tumbler back on top. Turn the handle while holding the top ring to close the jaws. Then, to make it so that no one can break in, turn the dial rings to jumble up the code. What exactly is happening inside? Well, let's pull back the curtain a little bit. There are no lasers and there are no fingerprint scanners. This vault is actually powered purely mechanically. Inside the vault, each dial ring has a bump. Turning the rings moves those bumps around. When the bumps are all lined up, the gap in the tumbler can fit over them. The tumbler slides up over the bumps and the vault can open again. We packed your crate with lots of fun, including some additional challenges like treasure hunt, code break, and something called a twist ending. There's a lot of cool science and engineering happening here. Our combination vault uses a purely mechanical means to open up a vault, but you might have seen safes use different approaches like a fingerprint scanner. Now, how do those work? Well, your fingers have tiny little ridges that make cool swirly little patterns that are unique to you. If you have a twin or sibling, well, they're not gonna match with you. A fingerprint scanner takes a picture of your finger to find this pattern to see if you are who you say you are. And that's how fingerprint scanners work. Thanks for building along with us. If you like what you see, like and subscribe. See you next time. Every spy needs a secret, it's a secret place, a secret, it's a... <laughs> this is a serious matter. I do know how to crack the code. <laughs>